What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my very first Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl VGC video. Now, I know a lot of people will say Marcos boosted Moxie Perez. No, VGC is staying on Sword and Shield. This is not VGC, it is Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. And to that I have to say, look, I'm not gonna call it BDSP bring four out of six no repeating items. Happens to be popular VGC players, maybe do a best of three format. I'm not going to call it that. A lot of EGC players are going to be playing doubles on Brilliant Diamond Shining Pro with an adjusted rule set to reflect that this is not official. So I mean, it's pretty much being called BDSP VGC or Battle Festival Doubles since that's uh, an actual tournament going on in there. But yeah, anyways, we're here. I'm getting over a sickness, so that's why I sound a little bit off and why it's taken me a while to make a video. But what I'm talking about today is Pokemon in BDSP VGC that I think are going to be sleeper picks that won't be immediately relevant in the format, but might actually find some usage as we go on and why that will be. Anyways, it's been a minute since I made a video, so if you guys want to do me a favor, leave a like on this video to support it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I'm once again bringing you daily VGC videos, but let's go ahead and get into the list. Here are five sleeper picks for BDSB VGC. So first up on our list is going to be Murkrow. Now Murkrow is... Honestly, a Pokemon that I missed a lot in VGC since it wasn't available in Sword and Shield, uh, but it has a lot going for it right now, and that's mainly due to the fact that it is the only Prankster Tailwind user in the entire game. Now, since this game has updated battle mechanics, there are dynamic speed mechanics, therefore, in the middle of a turn, if you Tailwind, your speed tier will be updated, so you will be having double speed, and probably be going first. Murkrow having access to Prankster Tailwind means that it can do it immediately, with a low chance of getting interrupted, and the dark typing means that no prankster taunt Pokemon will be able to stop it. So you pretty much have guaranteed Tailwind barring a fake out, and that allows for the rest of its team to be extremely fast on the field, being able to deal a lot of damage. I've been testing it next to a Garchomp, next to a Heatran, there are so many great partners for this Pokemon, and it's honestly just, it has so many tools at its disposal. The only thing is, in this game there is no Eviolite, therefore you're pretty much inclined to run a Focus Sash or some alternative item. And the EV spread that I've given this example set is similar to the way that people ran Liopard in Sword and Shield. You'd run max HP, max speed with a little bit in defense with a Focus Sash anyways because basically you want to make sure you don't get one shot but if you're going to invest in anything it might as well be bulk since you're going to be running foul play as your main stab. Now other tools that it has at its disposal Quash is a phenomenal move, it just forces a particular Pokemon to move last in the turn order, and with Prankster it's an extremely powerful move. Uh, it also has access to Feather Dance, which is essentially a minus two on any Pokemon that you select. You'll be able to negate Swords Dances, or um, I guess if something gets a Moxie boost or something, you'll be able to get rid of that. It also has access to moves like Haze, Parish Song, uh, Roost if you want to go bulky for some reason, but I think the most important tool is Prankster Taunt which is going to be very useful in a format where Bronzong and Cresselia will be going for Trick Rooms a lot of the time. So yeah, this is going to be a phenomenal Pokemon. I'm really excited to use it. I already have a couple of teams built with it, and I want to just play with it. So yeah. Next up on the list, in the same vein as the Prankster Murkrow, is going to be Inner Focus Crobat. Now, Crobat got access to uh, the buffed Inner Focus in Generation 8. It is now immune to Intimidate which means that it can more reliably run a physical moveset. In prior formats, you would actually see things like Safety Goggles Crobat with max HP, max speed, uh, Tailwind, Taunt, Protect, and Sludge Bomb. And that was mainly to avoid having to deal with uh, Incineroar Intimidate drops, stopping you from dealing damage with a physical move like Cross Poison. This also lets you more reliably run Brave Bird. However, in my example set, what I'm going to be running is a Lumberry, since there are no safety goggles, <laughs> with uh, 4 HP, 252 attack, 252 speed with a jolly nature, and of course inner focus. This will allow you to reliably uh, set up tailwinds on your opponent, but also be able to reliably stop combinations like Hitmontop plus Bronzong or Hitmontop plus uh, Cresselia for fake out uh, trick room stuff. Since you won't be able to be flinched, you'll be able to reliably taunt the trick room setter and then go for your tailwind on the next turn. Also, the fact that you're immune to Intimidate means your Brave Birds would be dealing a significant amount of damage coming off of your maxed out attack stat and that 120 base power stab move. Cross Poison is just there if you want it. I would honestly run uh, Protect there, but if you want an extra uh, stab option uh, that will allow you to hit fairies in the format, that's going to be really good. So yeah, 
Uh, overall, this Pokemon, I think, is going to be just useful for beating things like... Honestly, I think Sun is going to be saying that it's going to be pretty nice versus Venusaur is going to be very annoying. Uh, and this will allow you to use the Lumberry to uh, go ahead and bypass that possible sleep and then knock it out with a Brave Bird. Uh, alternatively, you could run U-Turn on this thing to get in and out in the field. And overall, it's just a very reliable Tailwind Setter and one of the fastest in the game at 130. It's honestly comparable to Murkrow at that speed tier. So yeah, Crobat. The third sleeper pick on this list is going to be Parasect. Now, you might be thinking, Marcos, Parasect is just, it's just awful. It, it's honestly, they did us a favor not including it in Sword and Shield. And to that, I have to say, you are wrong. It was bad, but honestly, since Amoongus doesn't exist, and this thing now has access to Rage Powder uh, as of Generation 5, last time it was in Diamond and Pearl, it wasn't good in VGC because all it had was Spore. But now it's got Spore and Rage Powder. It's basically a budget Amoongus. Um, the only thing that kind of annoys me is they got rid of Leech Life on this thing, which would have been amazing. So we're running X Scissor, but, uh, Parasect has 30 base speed, meaning it's extremely slow. It'll be able to put many things to sleep under Trick Room. Uh, you can honestly run it on, like, a Rain Team with Politoed, Bronzong, Kingdra, and Parasect itself. And take use of the Dry Skin ability, making you not only immune to water moves, but also be able to, uh, heal health as though you had leftovers in the rain. We're also running leftovers on the set itself. Because Leftovers plus Dry Skin will collectively heal, uh, what is it, 1 8th by Rain plus 1 16th by Leftovers, so what is that, that's uh, 3 16ths of your health, so that's honestly a lot. Uh, it's also going to be very useful for redirecting moves away from other Pokemon with that Rage Powder. Like I said, there are no safety goggles in this game, so if you want to stop sleep, you have to run like Lumberry or Chestoberry, so Spore is going to be very powerful, and being the slowest Spore user in the game, it's going to be really strong. A lot of people opt for Breloom as a Spore user, but if you have a Trick Room team, try out Parasect. It could be really nice. And finally, x to round out our moveset. Like I said, we don't have Leech Life, but this thing has a couple of other tools looking through its move list. If you really wanted to, you could run something like a Swords Dance set, or I don't know. Like This thing just has weird moves that it can run as like a support thing. Screech is at its disposal. Wide Guard is still on its moveset. So there are a couple of things you could do. At number 4 we have another grass type, and this is going to be Victory Bell. Now, Victory Bell wasn't in Sword and Shield, but what was in Sword and Shield was a buffed Venusaur with access to Weather Ball. Now that we're in BDSP, it has lost access to that very powerful tool, meaning that in Sun, Rain, uh, Sandstorm, it had a 100 base power move of whatever you know weather condition it was in. Mainly, it was very powerful uh, on Sun because you would have double speed and be able to hit something with a 100 base power fire move. Now, since it, it's lost that tool, Victory Bell is like honestly a comparable Pokemon. It's got 70 base speed compared to Venusaur's 80. However, I think that if you want to run Weather Ball, it's actually a pretty decent option. This thing also has access to different tools. Like really, it's just going to be Max Max, 100-100, uh, uh, Modest, Focus Sash, Chlorophyll, Weather Ball, Sleep Powder, Sludge Bomb, and Leaf Storm. But if you want to run a physical set, you can take advantage of that higher base attack stat and run something like a Leaf Blade knockoff set. It does get Leaf Blade and knockoff, which is kind of cool. Not many things get knockoff in this game, so it's a very powerful tool. And it also has Strength Sap at its disposal, meaning that uh, not only will be able to put things to sleep, but it can heal while lowering attack stats, which is a really powerful tool that's really limited in distribution. So that's something to take advantage of on Victory Bell. Overall, I do think Venusaur will be more viable in general. However, in a strictly Venusaur versus Victory Bell matchup, you'll find yourself with the upper hand strictly because you have access to that fire move, allowing you to one-shot opposing Venusaur. Victory Bell is going to be kind of an interesting Pokemon, and like I said, it might not be the best, but it is most certainly a sleeper pick. Finally, at the top of this list, my number five, or number one, depending on how we've been counting, I haven't really, you know, been doing that, is going to be Slacking. Now, you might be thinking, Marcos, stop hitting me with these low-tier Pokemon. Slacking sounds like garbage. It only moves every other turn. Yeah, it's got those busted stats, but what good is it if I'm just, you know, wide open for 50% of the game? Well, you might not know this if you are new to VGC, but in Generation 8, Weezing got a brand new ability. Kanto Weezing, which is transferable in this game, uh, has access to neutralizing gas which turns off all abilities. Intimidate, Swift Swim, Chlorophyll, Truant. They all get turned off. You could run this thing next to Regigigas if you wanted to. However, I would argue Slacking is a bit more viable 
strictly by virtue of having access to more coverage moves, especially Rock Slide. Now, this thing has 150 HP, 160 attack, 100 defense, meaning on the physical side, you're set. It has 100 speed, meaning it's at a really decent speed tier, just barely slower than Garchomp, and you're going to be eating those hits up anyways with 150, 100 bulk. The only thing that's lacking in is 65 special defense, which with 150 HP, it's, it's passable, it'll, it'll do fine. What you really want to do with this thing is maximize your damage output. Slap a life orb on this guy, run him next to a wheezing with neutralizing gas, meaning you're able to attack every turn instead of every other turn, and you'll be able to go for a powerful normal type move like body slam since return is gone, uh, giga impact if you want to nuke something, facade if you want to cover for the possible burn, and you'll be able to hit things for a lot of damage coming off of 160 base attack and a life orb by clicking moves like rock slide and earthquake, which mind you, earthquake from a slacking next to a wheezing will hit Pokemon like Rotom meaning you can surprise your opponent by leading off with the slacking and a Pokemon next to it, and you can attack on that first turn, but they might think, okay, I'm safe, let me switch in the Rotom on this on this Earthquake, and then you switch in your, uh, your Weezing next to your slacking, uh, completely neutralizing the Truant, making it so instead of not moving that turn, you are now moving, and that Rotom is now on the ground since Levitate has been turned off, meaning Earthquake will one-shot it. This thing is really powerful, and having Weezing next to it is a big part of that, but it's it's crazy, like, the, the main reason you would say slacking might not be viable is Truant and its Intimidate food. It doesn't want to get Intimidated, it hates uh, Hitmontop. But with Neutralizing Gas, it doesn't get Intimidated. This thing's crazy. I've been testing with it, it's been really fun, it's such a fun Pokemon to use. You just click buttons and nuke things, and it just does so much damage. It's honestly a very fun Pokemon in this format. And while it might not be the most popular, you should really get on board with this thing before uh, people find out what it can do. So yeah. That's going to be my list for today, guys. Thank you for stopping by the video. I'll be trying to get some in-game battles going with Mercury and Joe and everyone. But if you enjoyed this, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.